My face was splashed across the cover of every teen magazine in print. Um, I was a Trekkie, and I could have met Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, and Dr. McCoy. Do the math, crew of Star Trek from 1988. <laughs> One afternoon, while I was sitting around stage nine, talking with Mandy, my costumer, they opened the huge stage door across the way, and I could see right into the set of Star Trek V. It was a large area. Maybe it was like a cargo bay, full of extras and equipment. It was different from our set. Not as cool. <laughs> but it was unmistakably the Enterprise. Standing in the middle of it all was William Shatner. <laughs> He held a script open like it was some kind of holy book. And the way he gestured with his hands, I could tell that he was setting up a shot and discussing it with the camera crew. I waited for that familiar rush of nerves, but it didn't come. Seeing him as a director and not as Captain Kirk put me at ease. This was my moment. I knew that if I didn't walk over right then and introduce myself, I would never do it. I was wearing that gray acting ensign spe spacesuit. <laughs> no, the opposite of that. <laughs> it was unzipped, and I had the sleeves tied around my waist. <laughs> that costume was uncomfortable, so I take the top half off whenever I got the chance. Some people like to have a spacesuit crawling up their ass. <laughs> Not one of them. <laughs> because it was a jumpsuit, I would tie the sleeves around my waist, and I would wear a lightweight fleece jacket zipped up to cover the embarrassing muscle suit the producers made me wear. <laughs> I shuffled my feet and began to 
you back for the familiarity of my own spaceship. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> Captain James Tiberius Kirk of the Starship Enterprise, the only person in Starfleet to ever defeat the Kobayashi Maru, the man behind the Corbomite maneuver, the man who took the Enterprise to the Genesis planet to return Spock's Katra, the man who I admired since I was eight years old, was immediately transformed into William fucking Shatner. <laughs> At the top of this story, I usually remind the audience that we're actually cool now. <laughs> but it's still a great story. <laughs> I bit my lip and turned to say goodbye to the still photographer who had made the introduction, but he had vanished as well. <laughs> Thanks, guy. <laughs> I walked back to my own stage with my head down, avoiding eye contact the entire way. When I got to the entrance, I found Mandy and asked her to unzip my costume so I could put my fleece back on. As she unzipped the back, she said, Did you get to meet William Shatner? Yeah. I tried not to let on that I was upset. What's wrong? She said as she made her own fleece. Uh, well, I hesitated. Saying it out loud was going to make it real. Um, he was really a dick to me. <laughs> oh, Mandy, it turns out that Bill Shatner's a dickhead. <laughs> Her eyes widened and she gasped. What? Why? What happened? I fought back tears and recounted our introduction. What an asshole! <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry! I nodded my head and she gave me a hug. I drew a deep breath, shrugged my shoulders, and walked back to my trailer where I sat down and cried. Aww. I had spent weeks getting up the courage to meet this guy. In less than five minutes, in, in less than 20 words, he had insulted and humiliated me. He had reduced me from peer to peon. I wore my stupid costume that I hated, <laughs> thinking it would matter to him, and he made fun of it. <clears throat> Fifteen minutes later, an assistant director knocked on my door and told me that they were ready for me on the set. I stood up, wiped off my face, and walked into the stage. I took my seat on the bridge of the Enterprise D next to Brent Spiner. I heard about Shatner, Brent said. <laughs> Okay. I changed direction and walked to the stage phone. 
My heart began to beat hard in my chest. Had Gene Roddenberry heard? Oh, no. William fucking Shatner had known Gene for 10 years. 20 years. Over 20 years. If Gene knew that I'd upset him, maybe Gene was going to be upset at me, too. <laughs> I passed the craft service table set up behind the star field that hung next to the 10 forward set. Michael Dorn and Jonathan Frakes were pouring cups of coffee. To hell with him, W. <laughs>
already here. <laughs> I read it to him. Good. You are a fine young man. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She lied there. The creator of Star Trek and Great Bird of the Galaxy had called William fucking Shatner, Captain Kirk, and director of Star Trek V, and asked him to apologize to me. Will he, 16-year-old acting ensign in an ugly spacesuit and drooling fan? Of all the wonderful gifts Gene gave me over the years, this is one of my most fondly remembered. Because I'm pretty sure that without Gene's intervention, that note never would have been written. <laughs>